Hey fellow tennis nerds, today I wanted to talk about online coaching. I've tried a new service called improves.co and uh, pretty interesting results actually. I only done, done it once and I, uh, how it works is that I sent them a link to a video uh, of mine, the ENCODE 6195 review, you can find it on this channel and I asked them to uh, say what's wrong with my forehand. I know there's plenty of things wrong with my game but I would be interested to see focus on that stroke and see how I could improve it. And um, I went for Petros Krysokos, uh, a young, talented uh, player on the Futures Challenger Tour. He's around 380 in the world now, uh, just won a title, uh, Futures title. So uh, definitely a very interesting guy to listen to when it comes to improving my, my play. I've never really been to super top level coaches before. Um, I did a video with Luis, who was ATP 500 ranked um, a while back, you can check the channel. And that was very uh, insightful, Luis was a great coach, really felt like I learned a lot from that one. I've been trying to improve my game, I'm a self-taught player, uh, so this all has been a lot of work to put in, because you don't have that kind of technique and the footwork, it's not all ingrained, so you need to work looking at videos, work with a coach if you can, although I can't afford to go to a coach every week a few times, so uh, I'm just trying to work on my game myself uh, while testing gear and, and stuff that I've, I've done for, for quite a long time. And um, what I got from this was, was very insightful, uh, not something I didn't know to be honest, but for the price to just get this kind of a level player look at your game. I think it's pretty fantastic. I mean you can go up on the site they, they have Paul Anacone as well Which is obviously a great coach coached Sampras and Federer so you can't really ask for more That's $250 though so a little bit steeper But 20 bucks to get a player of this caliber to look at, at your game. It's, it's pretty pretty interesting offer I would say and um, so uh, maybe that they will see that that's uh, not feasible if the requests keep coming in if it just you know uh, grows the platform. Uh, video coaching, I mean there are a few uh, platforms probably out there um, if you know any you can comment but uh, this is the one that I'm familiar with and um, I really enjoyed my experience. Obviously uh, there are platforms where you can learn about tennis, there are plenty of YouTube coaches that are great, some not so great but there are plenty of content to study uh, but usually if you have to go, want to go deeper um, they have some kind of sign up process uh, which is understandable. The best idea is to get a coach upfront real life experience and work on your game but the second best should be the video coaching to be able to actually interact send a video get video feedback back it should be the best approach and that's why I was so curious about this service and uh, what I learned was, was uh, that I, I don't work enough with my footwork I know this already I do it sometimes but many times I get lazy most often I get lazy and uh, I, I tend to arm too much the ball and that's an issue I do. Uh, Petros explained it really well. He was in quarantine so his video was from his hotel room while he was quarantining uh, during this tournament. It was a strange season as you know um, but he still managed to do a video where I actually understand the, all the points he made and it makes complete sense to me. I've watched your video, I've studied it carefully. Um, I'm gonna mainly focus on the forehand side uh, but I'll give you an overall advice um, towards the end. Uh, why I chose the forehand, I love the forehand, most players love the forehand. I use that side to be more aggressive, I use that side to um, win points, I use that side to hit more winners, and I use that side to make the opponent run for the most part. So that's my weapon as well and I hope I'll give you uh, great advice on that side. As far as your videos goes, um, I've studied it carefully and I've seen a few things that uh, you can change and I think that will make a huge impact on your game and on anyone's game really. Uh, they're not big changes, they're minor changes that can have a huge impact on your game so I hope, uh, I hope you can try them out and, and let us know how, uh, how improved your game is after these. Now number one is the better position as I call it. When I was watching you play your forehands we're pretty smooth, you have a great technique as far as the racket and everything else, but one thing that I didn't like was the position of the legs. So for example, when you're hitting the ball, you seem pretty, um, pretty close feet together. You had your 
feet close together, whether that's open stance like this or closed stance like that, your feet were close to each other. Uh, what that doesn't help you with is the transfer of power. So for example, if you wanna throw a rock pretty far or with a lot of power, you don't wanna have your legs here or you don't wanna have your legs here because you are swinging hard and you are swinging smoothly. So from here, you would just swing and there was no transfer of power when it comes to hips and legs. Most of the power you're gonna have while you're playing forehands and backhands, but mainly forehands, because you can play open stance, is the legs. That is why some of the strongest forehands on earth, such as, I'm gonna say, Rublev, the guy is skinny. He doesn't have any muscle, but why he hits the ball so hard is because he has a wider stance, he gets pretty low, and then he transfers the energy and power from this leg to the front. So from here, back, and then he just moves forward. You are just doing this. So you're in position and your feet will closer to each other. You're just swinging the shoulders. What this will do is help you find rhythm. It's gonna help you hit a clean ball, but it's not gonna help you be aggressive in the long term because these guys are using their stance, it's a wide stance, and they're getting low, and then they're transferring the power from the back leg to the front leg. This helps them with the rhythm as well and going back and going forward um, and generate power uh, with pace, without pace on whatever they need it to be. You are mostly doing close stance in terms of your feet close to each other and then you didn't have enough power to lean on the back leg and then transfer the power to the front leg. You are mainly getting in position, standing here, not even bending enough, you are pretty much up to this level here, and then just swing in here. You are sometimes transferring just a little bit, but there was no load as well. Uh, one tip I give uh, to junior players mostly is if you're trying to find rhythm when you're playing a match or practice, because sometimes you're just gonna go to practice and your, your timing is gonna be off, your rhythm is gonna be off. One thing that I, it helped me personally is counting. So for example, just like the serve, I used to learn the serve as in one, two, three, four is hitting, same with the forehand. So if I'm here, I'm gonna go in my head, obviously I'm not gonna count out loud. You can do that, but uh, just counting by yourself is fine. So it's one, two, three, four hitting. So that counting helped me get my rhythm right. So that was one and mostly just to sum that up is you need a wider stance with the legs you don't want this i wish you could see my shoes but i hope you get the idea it's wider stance you don't want to you don't want this or that when you're hitting a forehand that's a no no you want a wider stance you want to get lower even if you have time and even if the ball is easy you still want a wider stance even if the ball is here you don't want to stand here just hit the ball you want to get low, you want to get wide, and then transfer the back leg energy to the front leg to generate more power. Um, a great example is baseball pitchers. You'll never see a guy pitching a baseball like this. You will always see them kind of wide and then to just transfer the power. So that's always in my mind when I'm hitting a forehand. Rublev does it in a great way. He, he looks like he's just pitching baseball all day. Um, that's one. The second one is anticipation. I know that's a little bit tougher because depending with who you play, you're gonna get used to a faster ball and better players. So the better players you hit with, the faster the balls you're gonna get used to. Uh, what I mean by that, if you're playing with Rublev practice, you're gonna get used to, after a while, you're gonna get used to hitting and being ready for faster balls. If you're playing with average players, their balls are gonna be slower, so you're gonna maybe uh, compensate for an easier ball instead of getting ready and just hitting a tougher ball. Um, but what I mean by anticipation is you have to realize and you have to anticipate and think where your opponent's ball is going to come, bounce, and where you have to place yourself to hit the next ball. Uh, that takes practice, that takes matches. It basically takes a while for someone to get used to it. Um, but the easier tip I would say that you can do is the sooner and faster you see the ball and you realize where it's coming, the sooner you can react to it and the sooner you can go to it. A lot of players 
just like when I was watching you, you're waiting for the ball to come to you instead of you going to the ball and hit it. What that does is if you're waiting for the ball, the ball has to travel in time. And by the time you go to the ball, if you're a little bit late, you're losing time and the ball keeps dropping, dropping, dropping. If you get, if you go there and you're late, the ball would basically be below your waist or shoulder or waist. And what you have to do is if the ball is low, you have to hit it up. If you hit it up, you're giving the opponent more time. So just to sum it all up, if you see the ball coming from the net, the sooner you go to the ball, one, you're going to hit it faster, two, you're going to give your opponent less time, and three, you can hit the ball from a better angle, from a higher spot. So you can, for, if, if you're hitting the ball from up here, you have more options on where to place the ball, whether that's cross, angle, down the line, or whatever you want to do. Uh, if you let the ball drop, which you did a lot of times in the video, um, I, I understand the beginning was just hitting and warming up and practicing, but the sooner you anticipate the ball, the faster you can go to it, the faster you can hit it, you can give less time to the opponent and you have more options yourself. So I think that was, that was, that was the second huge um, I think improvement that you can do, you can do to your game. Uh, a lot of basically average players don't do that at all. They just kind of stay and wait for the ball. And if you see the better players, such as Roger, he sees the ball, he's always on the attacking mode as if as soon as the ball passes the net, I'm always going to the ball just so I can give less time to the guy. And in that level where Roger plays and Novak plays, uh, we're talking about split seconds, uh, not even seconds. If Roger can take a split second out of Novak's preparation, he's in a better position because he gives him less time to think, less time to react, and less time to hit the ball. And Roger is always in the attacking. Um, you can see that with many players on the tour right now. Yeah, overall, uh, as I said, um, I think the forehand side needs to be wider stance so you can have a better transfer of power and you can hit the ball harder. Uh, the other one is anticipation, looking for the ball, trying to think where it's going to bounce so you can get on it and hit it earlier so you can give your opponent uh, less time and also have more options where the ball, if the ball is here, if you want to hit it here or here. If, if you're waiting for the ball to go low, then you're going to have to be forced to hit it up. And by hitting it up, you're giving more time to the opponent. Whereas if you're hitting it from up here, you have more options. You're giving less time to the opponent. So that's a huge plus. Uh, other than that, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed the advice. And um, I would love to uh, find out what you think about it. And uh, let me know if you liked it. Let me know if it helped you as well. That really helped. Petros really pointed out that I'm... I'm standing with my feet too close together uh, and and sometimes just hitting it straight up uh, more with the arm than with the rotation uh, of my body. So that's something uh, that I got out of this video. He also pointed out another thing that a lot of players struggle with and that's one that's very difficult to train in my opinion. It's the anticipation of the ball trajectory. So where is the ball coming to? on the court? How far is it going to go? How deep is it going to go into the court? What kind of spin is on it? So what happens is that sometimes you position yourself and then you're, you're misjudging the bounce or the, the ball trajectory and you kind of end up having to uh, correct in the last minute and it just becomes a really weird floppy shot. So that's an issue that I see over and over again. I do it. I, I see my own videos. I see, oh no, I, I'm doing it. I'm too far away from the ball, too close to the ball. I'm trying to work on it with a more stable core, stable foundation, bent knees, legs more far apart, really a proper loading position and over and over again getting that into the system. That's my goal now to work on. But being able to read the ball, kind of dance with the ball, as Luis said in a, in a previous video I, I did with him, uh, that's tricky and requires a lot of practice. A lot of tennis balls need to be hit for you to get that into your system and really, really get it ingrained. Uh, but that's something I'm, I'm dedicated to do. Uh, I'm a tennis nerd. I really love tennis. Uh, I want to improve and that's uh, why I enjoy tennis so much. There's kind of infinite improvement potential in this sport. It's so difficult. And getting advice from a good player, a really solid player uh, who can point out a few things you do really helps. And uh, so I really enjoy that service. Uh, like I said, I've only tried it with one coach. There are several coaches on the site. So if you've tried them, uh, if you have experience with Improves.co, please let me know how, what you think about the service and uh, 
what your experience is and what you learned uh, or didn't learn from it. Uh, my experience was positive. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was quite a low price, $20, I think, to, to have someone analyze your video and give you some pointers. Really appreciate that. And um, I, I would try, I definitely try it again, uh, maybe with my serve, because it's, uh, I mean, there are plenty of areas to improve, of course, but that's a very technical part of the game that a lot of players struggle with. And you can get a lot out from. So uh, if you have a good serve on, on the club level, uh, you definitely win a lot of points for free. That's all for this Tennis Nerd video because they're calling me now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll talk soon and uh, don't forget to play some tennis.